In this video, I'm going to be talking about the differences between calculating the short circuit current and the fault current for a single phase final circuit. Now, when we talk about fault current, we're talking about live to earth faults. And when we're talking about short circuit current, we mean live to neutral for single phase or live to live for three phase. However, when you're completing a test certificate and you're entering the particulars of the installation at the origin of the installation, where we are asked for the prospective fault current, the figure that we enter is the larger of the prospective fault current or the prospective short circuit current. So in a single phase installation, we measure between live and earth and then between live and neutral and we record the higher of the two. Now the highest value will usually be the prospective short circuit current, especially on a three phase because obviously it's uh, 400 volts. But even on a single phase, I would expect the short circuit current to be the higher of the two because the impedance between line and neutral will be lower than between live and earth due to the reduced size of the main protective conductor. So when you record the details of the origin of the installation, the values that you enter for ZE and PFC may not necessarily relate to each other because the PFC will likely be the higher of either the fault current or the short circuit current. The reason that I mention this is to point out the differences between calculating the short circuit current and the fault current for a final circuit. So with fault current, the resistance for the final circuit will be the ZS, but for short circuit current, the resistance will be the ZSC, or Z brackets elsewhere, as you may have seen written on your, on your test kit. Now, when we're on site, it's possible to measure the ZS and the ZSC, and then to use Ohm's law to calculate the current by dividing the voltage by the resistance. However, when we're calculating at the design stage, we need to calculate the ZS and the ZSC. The way we do this for fault current is by adding the external impedance, the ZE, to the calculated R1 plus R2 to calculate the ZS. But for short circuit current, we take the impedance between line and neutral at the origin, the ZESC, and add to the calculated R1 plus RN to calculate the ZSC. So the calculation is similar, but the difference being that the impedance at the origin is between line and neutral. So say you're working on a project and you request a new electricity supply and you're not able to measure the values before starting the project. You may be given a value by the DNO by inquiry. I recently requested a quote for a large electricity supply and was provided a value for ZE, the external impedance, and a value for PFC, the prospective fault current. But as I mentioned earlier, the PFC will likely be the higher of either the prospective fault current or the prospective short circuit current. So what we need to do is to use the ZE for calculating the fault current and we use the PFC for calculating the short circuit current. So if you're ever asked to calculate the short circuit current for a final circuit and you're given the value for ZE and the value for PFC, we don't use the value for ZE. What we do is we take the value for PFC and use Ohm's law to determine the impedance at the origin. In other words, we convert the PFC into ohms by dividing the voltage by the PFC. So resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. So we divide the voltage by the current to find the ZESC, so that's the ZE short circuit. We can then calculate the R1 plus Rn and add to the ZESC to find the ZSC, which is basically the impedance between line and neutral at the furthest point of the circuit. And then we divide the voltage by the ZSC to calculate the short circuit current, which is called ISC. If you're wondering how to calculate R1 plus R2 and R1 plus Rn, there are values in the on-site guide for various sizes of cables, and the calculation is similar. The only difference is that if the circuit has a reduced size CPC, the value for R2 will be different to Rn, but in the on-site guide, there are combinations for different sizes of cables. So for example, if you've got a 2.5 mm twin earth, you would use the value for 2.5 plus 1.5 for your R1 plus R2, and you would use the value for 2.5 plus 2.5 for the value for R1 plus Rn. If you'd like to know more about how to do this calculation, there is another video on my channel and I'll put a link at the top of the screen.